What is going on everyone? This video is about practical project ideas to learn data engineering on AWS so you can handle a variety of real world challenges. In my opinion, data engineers should not silo themselves by just having skills to build batch data processing pipelines, but should be able to handle any data challenge. This video will be mentioning specific data architecture patterns relevant to know rather than mentioning specific data sets to process. Each architecture diagram is going to have a data source which represents the start of the pipeline and a data target that represents the end of the pipeline if data is being transformed. All right, so let's get started. So the first project idea is building an event-driven data pipeline to handle processing raw files that upload into an AWS S3 bucket. This pattern is used when you have files that arrive in an ad hoc basis and you want to perform some transformation on it before loading it into a data target. So before we can transform this data, we need to create an event trigger for when a file drops in S3 so we know that there is data to process. We can do this by creating an Amazon event bridge rule. Our rule would be connected to an Amazon SNS topic, which would have an Amazon SQSQ attached to our AWS Lambda function. This SQSQ is going to create a backlog of all the messages we need to process by our Lambda function. So why don't we simply connect our Amazon event bridge rule to our Lambda function to process the data? Well, technically we can, but we might be creating some scaling problems of our data pipeline. For example, what happens if 10,000 files drop around the same time into S3 for us to process? Well, this is not going to be a good situation because our Lambda servers by default can only run 1000 Lambdas at the same time, or if we have limited the concurrent runs of our Lambda function. In this situation, our Lambda would fail to invoke and our files would just not be processed at all. So by adding the queue, we can keep track of how many files we still need to process given our Lambda process capacity. We can even add a dead letter queue for added resilience. So let's say if our Lambda function fails to process the data file successfully, so it can be processed at a later time. Now, some of you might be thinking, so I understand why we need an SQS queue, since we'll keep track of all the files we need to process, but why do we need an SNS topic? Well, this allows for other subscribers in the future, like another SQS queue to connect to our event. If let's say another team in the future wants to build another data pipeline to process the same data source for whatever reason. Finally, we would write the transform data to our target, and it can be anything, but for the sake of this demo, I made it another AWS S3 bucket, and the file format would be Parquet. So our Lambda function will be doing the transformation required on our data source. If you're a data engineer, this would most likely be written in Python to ingest your data into a Lambda function, perform your transformations, and then write it to our new S3 bucket. One Python library that can be really helpful for reading and writing data in your Lambda functions is AWS Data Wrangler library. So what are the pros and cons of this architecture? What I like about this architecture pattern is it's completely serverless, so you don't have to manage any infrastructure, and you don't have to worry about scaling up or down machines. One con I would like to point out is that you should be aware of the size of your individual files that you want to process. Lambdas are not designed to handle big data in an individual Lambda function. So this limitation of handling big data brings us to our next example, which is building a batch processing data pipeline with AWS Glue. So in the event you're dealing with big data, for example, your individual file you want to process is gigabytes in size, or you want to process many files at once, this next architecture pattern would be good to know. It is very common for data engineers required to build data pipelines to handle big data. Since AWS Glue leverages Spark under the hood, it's an excellent choice when you're dealing with big data. In this example, I have my data source which resides in an AWS S3 bucket. It can be either many files or a single large file. So in order to interact with our data in AWS Glue, we define the data source first in the AWS Glue catalog. One method to populate our AWS Glue catalog based on the schema of your data set is using a Glue crawler. Now that our data is populated in the Glue catalog for our data source, we can now develop an AWS Glue job, which can be written in Python or Scala, that can perform whatever transformations you need on your data set to write it to your next processing zone in your data lake. Most of the development time as a data engineer would be spent developing your AWS Glue job in this example. The target here could be anything, for example, an RDS database or AWS Redshift, but again, I chose an S3 bucket with the file format being Parquet, which could just be another zone in your data lake, such as a curtailed or process zone. Now we're gonna probably want this to happen on a schedule or trigger on events. So in order to do this, AWS Glue does support orchestration, so we can configure our job to run within the service. Now this isn't the only way to orchestrate your Glue jobs. You can also use AWS Event Bridge rule to orchestrate your job. Another common pattern I see is for data engineers to build the infrastructure and dashboard to provide data analytics to business users. So the next example is how we can build a low cost serverless dashboard on AWS. So let's say our data source, our Parquet file stored on AWS S3. We can assume that the data has already been transformed and cleaned and ready to be visualized, which has been done by another data platform upstream. 
So first we need to make sure that our data is defined in the AWS Glue catalog. Once our data is defined in the catalog, we can use Amazon Athena as the serverless compute engine where we only have to pay per query on our data. We can then build an Amazon QuickSight dashboard, which would then use Amazon Athena to perform the queries on our data. Our end users would be able to log into Amazon QuickSights and use the dashboards you created to see the underlying data and interpret the data visually. So another common type of work that a data engineer might be involved with is database migration to the cloud from an on-premise system, or even switching a database to another database on AWS. So this can be done with the data migration service. This is done in two stages if your data is coming from two separate types of databases. In this example, our data source is Microsoft SQL Server, and the goal here is to migrate it to a Postgres SQL Server hosted on AWS. So leveraging the AWS schema conversion tool first, it can automatically convert the source database schema and a majority of the database code objects, including views, stored procedures, and functions to a format compatible with the target database. Any objects that cannot automatically be converted are clearly marked, so then they can be manually converted to complete the migration. So now that we know what the target schema is going to look like in our target database, we can now use the database migration service to perform the one-time migration of all the data or ongoing replication. An ongoing replication task keeps the source and target databases in sync. All right, so the last example I'm going to leave you with is one related to processing real-time streaming data on AWS. You may have a use case in your organization where you need to perform analytics on data in real time. For example, some data that makes sense to store in a data stream could be website click streams, database event streams, financial transactions, social media feeds, IT logs, and location tracking events. So in my opinion, it's good to know how to process data in real time if your data source is a Kinesia stream. Now there are a couple ways to do this. You could write a Lambda function to process your stream. This will involve having to write custom logic in your Lambda function for this to work. Another method is to use the Amazon Kinesis Data Analytics service, which allows you to transform and analyze streaming data in near real time using Apache Flink. So the querying and analytics could happen directly in the service, and then you would be able to write your results to the data target. Another method is to leverage Amazon Kinesis Firehose to process your data. With Firehose, you can transform raw streaming data into formats like Apache Parquet and dynamically partition streaming data without needing to build your own processing pipelines. As you can see here, there are many ways to process your data when your data source is a Kinesis data stream. You have to select which one best meets your needs and skill set. So I hope this video was helpful to give you some architecture examples on how you can process data in AWS depending on your data needs. As you can see here, there's just not one standard way to process your data as a data engineer, so you should be familiar with multiple AWS services so you can handle any type of data challenge on AWS. Thanks so much for watching, and if you're interested in more videos on working with data on AWS, please consider subscribing to my channel. If you learned something or think this video will be helpful for others, please hit that like button. Thanks again, and see you next time.